need from the Brunswick World Team Challenge Series. Joe Natoli, fourth frame, second game for Saz's Barbecue Sauce. And Joe needs to make a good shot here and get his team pumped up again. They're kind of they're kind of letting down here, and if they're not careful, they're going to just put Kelly's right back in the match, and that seems to be what's happening. This is not an easy spare here. He's got the six and the ten, and it's very easy to miss it. Only a few ways to make it, a lot of ways to miss it. If you pick the six off the ten, a lot of things can go wrong. Joe's a very good spare shooter, and I don't expect him to miss it. Boy, we see this happen a lot in the Baker Earl, where one team jumps out to a big lead, but yet at the end it always seems to be nip and tuck. Natoli got it. Almost picked it, and you can see by Joe's reaction, <laughs> he wasn't real sure until they fell down. Now here's Abood, who uh, struggled a bit in the opening game for Kelly's Pro Shop with a spare and then an open frame in the ninth. This is his first ball on the new lane. And that's what you call overreaction. By that, what the player means when he says my ball overreacted is that when it did grip the lane, it gripped it so much that it broke very sharply on the back. And here's a look at that. He's playing the third arrow, gets it out to about the eight board, but look how sharply it breaks on the back. And he didn't expect that much hook in the last few feet of the lane. Here another 3-6-10, a difficult shot. Just enough. Pats himself on the back. <laughs> He's can't wait pleased. to sit down. <laughs> <laughs> but that's the kind of humor that loosens your team up and keeps them going. Here's a look at Rich's. You see him pat himself in the back. That's a boy, Rich. <laughs> <laughs> well done. Anchorman for Sass. Their lead down in the 60s now. It was 82. Brian Brazo leaves the 10. Well, we're talking about filling frames here. Now, that's what they're thinking about. If they can fill frames, Kelly's will not be able to make the comeback that uh, Kelly's is very capable of making. Remember, both these teams are former champions, so they know what it's like uh, to bowl in this format. They've done it many times. They know how quickly it can turn around. Switching balls to a ball that won't hook so he can cover the tempo. Both these teams, of course, because they were winners last year, participated in the Grand Championship last summer in Reno, Nevada. Sazen's Barbecue Sauce finished ninth in Reno, and uh, Kelly's Pro Shop in Reno finished in sixth place. Tom Kelly, Jr., the captain and the anchorman for his club. Fifth frame. Well, he's just continuing where he did last game, uh, throwing that big hook and 10 pins in a pit. Boy, when he hits them, there's no doubt. That's right. Well, he has a lot of ball speed and a tremendous wrist rotation, and that's what makes the ball break so sharply on the back. And you can see all 10 pins in the pit and no ball deflection. All right, we're coming down the stretch in the semifinal match. Sixth frame, Ken Sharkowitz for Sassas. There's the stubborn 10. All over this now. Good adjustment there by the Sharp. He made a good move there. Remember the first frame on this lane, he missed the head pin, leaving the one, two, four. This time he hit the pocket solid and he was very disappointed that he didn't strike. And he picks up the 10, Ken Sharkowitz in the sixth for Sazas. Sweeper results this week in Denver included a 300 game by the winner, touring pro Debbie McMullen. Boy, she's tough. She can bowl. This young lady can really play the game as it is. Obviously, she averaged well over, two, over 240 to win that sweeper. Jay Watts for Kelly's. The same kind of reaction that that uh, uh, Rich got on his shot when his went through the middle of the head pin. This ball actually broke sooner and sharper. The ball isn't getting far enough down the lane before it's creating friction. Right there, it breaks very sharply, and that's not enough skid for the players to keep it in play. And they're not making the right adjustment yet. They should be paying a little more attention or listening a little more to the player that bowls in front of well, them. Well, that's a very similar reaction to uh, the last boot ball. That's correct. There, see, he makes an overcorrection and misses the spare. And uh, Kelly's right now digging his own grave. Mm -hmm. A critical open in the sixth frame of the second game. If anybody should know what it's like out here, uh, Kelly should. They're our most successful team in the regional players, uh, regional roll-offs, winning or making the television show in four out of five attempts. That's amazing. 
Yeah, that's tremendous. Uh, the Peterson, the strike in the seventh for Sazes, but you're right, Earl. They, every tournament they enter, they're right there, and now they seem to be uh, falling apart on their own. Doug Laird, seventh frame for Kelly's. A little more ball speed, but he still got the, the ball still went a little earlier than he wanted to, and uh, that's really the only thing you can do. You can only move so much on the lane surface. After that, you have to change either the rotation by, another, in other words, how many revolutions you have on the ball when you release it, or you have to change the loft, which will, if you loft it more, will delay the hook point, or you have to change the ball speed, which will also you throw harder, delay the hook point. And that's what they need. One of those last two moves are the right one to make, and they haven't found it yet, and unfortunately, this match is almost over. Some of the other finishers here at the Denver Regional at Celebrity Sports Center here this weekend. We had some great scores, some great action, a full field. Close action all the way. As we crawl up the ladder. We'll be back with the end of our first semifinal. Coming right up. We're nearly finished with a semifinal match in Saz's Barbecue Sauce out of Milwaukee with a nice, comfortable lead as we come down the stretch. We're into the eighth frame. Niall Konacek will be up for Saz's. Konacek just joining his club this week, replacing an injured member, Joe Olivo, and he responded well. 199 qualifying average for Konacek. Well, no sooner said than did, Bob. <laughs> he said he responded well, and there he gets, uh, he got one out a little wide, and you can see uh, with the lead they have, he's not overly concerned, but just the washout, the one, two, four, ten, and obviously the idea here to get the ball to the left side of the head pin and have it slide into the ten. Well, he may be concerned now, Earl, about uh, how he's performing for the championship game, assuming they get there, because Konacek, three open frames in his four deliveries in the semifinals. Well, he was fortunate that the rest of the team rolled very well. John Pearson for Kelly. And he got the wall shot. And as uh, they used to say, hit him pin and watch him spin. Yeah. Here's a look at that shot, and watch the ball. Just gets enough of the head pin. Sent it to the sideboard, it comes back, picks out the six, the 10, and the head pin kind of just enough to get them all down. Looks like they didn't want to go down. That's a how lazy slow they strike. fell. A little lazy strike. And there's Joe Natoli, old dependable, always in the pocket area. This time he, he carried the strike. He's a good type of bowler to have in that uh, fourth and ninth frame, isn't it? You bet. This kind of guy will set it up for the anchor man. And here's Rich Abood, who has also struggled today. And uh, after I bragged about how good a bowler he was. You think we'd learn after a while? Yeah. Well, there there the you real. go. That's the real Rich Abood right there. I don't know where he's been for the first game and a half, but... Well, he doesn't have to make any apologies. He's the owner of a PBA national title and a tremendous bowler over the years. And he helped a great deal, his teammates said. He was able to give advice and settle everybody down, and he did well this week. Anchorman Brian Brazo, also the co-captain of Sassers. Take the crossover. Well, all the players are still struggling a little bit with the lane condition. Uh, we've talked about it before, and it's worth saying again, it's a very competitive lane condition. By that, I mean it doesn't give you any help, but if you make good shots, you'll get a good ball reaction. And by that, I mean you have to repeat what you did the shot before. You have to throw up the same release, the same ball speed, and lay it down at the same place on the lane surface. I would think it's very difficult to make all of these adjustments, Earl, when you're only bowling two balls a, two balls a game, and, and then you switch lanes. It's tough to make these, these moves. Well, that's the whole idea of that format, though, is to make it competitive, make it so that everybody, if you win, you earned it. There's, there's, no, there's very little luck involved in the Baker system. You have to get out there and make good shots to win. And everybody raves about it. Every player I've ever talked to just loves the format. That's true, Bob. We talk to these guys and time after time you say, I can't wait to bowl the next one. I'm really looking forward to it. This was great. That's all you hear. Tom Kelly Jr. is going to wrap it up here for Kelly's Pro Shop. You know, and continuing on those lines that we just were talking about, that's why in a place like Pittsburgh, they'll tell you in advance, we're taking 50 entries. If you want to bowl, get it in now. Mm -hmm. Because you may not get, you might get shut out. Oh, word spreading all across the country. We saw that starting at the end of last year when uh, they had 80 teams in Baltimore, and it, it's just picked up all across the country. People can't wait to get in. 
Kelly, it's funny, I spoke with him before the match and how often they've been on TV, and he said, you know, I'm not nervous anymore, but he still remembers his first one last year in Detroit. He said he thought the ball weighed 50 pounds. That's how nervous he was. <laughs> So it's going to be Saz's moving into the championship game as we take a look at some of the other top finishers here this week at the Denver Regional. It's going to be Saz's barbecue sauce from Milwaukee against the number one seed, El Nopal. One versus two coming up for the championship here at the Celebrity Sports Center.